Hey guys, how you doing? So in this video, we're going to talk about when to consider scaling your app, when you should consider the scalability of the code base that you're producing, and we're going to dispel a couple of myths in this video. So recently, somebody sent me some private video that a particular school is using to train their students. And in this video, they were talking about the initial design of an application. And the teacher was saying that you have to look at scalability when you're first writing your app. And I just shut it off right there at that time. From somebody who's been coding from 94, somebody who has developed many apps that are used commercially, and I've had apps with over a million users, I can tell you that scalability is something that should be at best an afterthought uh, when you're first developing your apps. When somebody tells you that uh, you should be looking at scalability from day one for a new app, you should just say, okay, thank you very much and leave. There are two big reasons why you shouldn't be too concerned about a brand new app in terms of its scalability. Number one, 99% of apps will never have to be concerned about scalability. Number two, software, bandwidth, server cost are so affordable these days. Software is so efficient these days. So the core languages, the core databases, the servers, whether it be Nginx or even good old Apache, they're so efficient these days. Uh, the hardware that we run web apps on, they're so efficient, they're so powerful. The scale is practically never an issue for the vast majority of applications out there. So to waste your time on your first version of your app, I'm talking about the alpha version, the version one, is literally that, is a waste of time and money. I've seen people waste their time on that, and it's just, it's just, they're just burning cash, and they are not uh, advancing their product. So if you have any experience building commercial apps, apps actually get deployed in the field. Now we're talking about web apps, right? Scale is not an issue with mobile apps, right? Because when you develop a native iOS app or a native Android app, you know, the app itself doesn't have to scale. The backend databases have to be well designed if you have some use there so that we don't have, we don't have issues with data stores. But beyond that, the scalability issue is really with web apps. So first and foremost, the second thing to remember is that you are building the first version of the app, which means you don't know what the actual use case is going to be in the end. So let me explain. You may come up with an idea for an app and you have ideas based on how you think people will use it and what people will do. But a lot of this is in your head. A lot of this is speculative. So you don't exactly know what people are going to want. So you're going to write your first app and you're going to deploy it and then users are going to start using it, hopefully. And then you're going to see all the things you're going to have to change. And let me tell you, typically there's a lot of change to be done because a lot of times when you're building an app, there's a lot of speculation, there's a lot of guesswork in terms of how people are going to use it, what features they're going to want, what stuff is going to get in the way of their productivity. And so you have to expect lots of changes, lots of inter iterations. So you're going to be rewriting a lot. So for, for example, my latest app, Studio Web, well, it's been around for a decade now, but I've done other stuff before, before that. But with that app, I created the idea, I mapped out the architecture, and then I got people on it, my little team, and we deployed it, built it, deployed the first version. With that first version of Studio Web, we may have gotten 60% of it right, maybe 50% of it right in terms of what people needed to use the app properly, both teachers, schools, districts, and students. So there's a lot of rewriting to be done, a lot of rewriting to be done. And it became actually a lot of franken code in the end because we kept having to add new capabilities and strip out things, and it was, it was, it was a lot of work. So the main point to take away is if you start bothering with scalability issues, with this first app, this first release, you're probably going to have to be gutting, gutting all of that work anyway, because you're probably going to have to be changing core functionality to begin with. So this is going to create a cascade of changes that you're going to have to uh, deal with throughout the code base. So you don't want to put in all this infrastructure code like scaling issues 
like being able to scale rather, and then have to go change it again. That's why on a side note, I always tell people when it comes to unit testing and automated testing, never do it with version one of the app. You're wasting your time because again, the use case, meaning how the app will be used, the features it needs, et cetera, et cetera, are probably going to change a lot from version one to two. So don't waste your time. And again, to emphasize, to re-emphasize, due to the fact that our smartphones are super fast, our computers are super fast, everybody's on high-speed internet, well, the vast majority, the software frameworks that we use, whether it be in JavaScript or Node, with Node, whether it be Python, Django, PHP, uh, Laravel, or PHP, Code Igniter, whether it be c .net and the and the Microsoft web stack, Java, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. They're so performant these days that it is rare, it is the rare exception that you're going to have to be concerned about scaling issues. Just because they're so performant out of the box compared to where they were 15, 20 years ago, that we used to have to do a lot of work to get them to the point where they're just out of the box, uh, where they're super capable and happy in terms of handling load, a load of people. Now, when they're talking about scalability, they're talking about concurrent users, meaning many different people using it at the same time. That's the other major issue. Chances are your app will never hit that, right? You could probably build a simple app with, pick whatever stack you want, PHP, uh, C-sharp, uh, .NET, uh, JavaScript, whatever. You could probably build a simple app, web app, and have a company that builds up to, to be making uh, hundreds of thousands of dollars a year and not have to ever concern yourself with scaling issues. So let me give you a quick story about something I saw many years ago. So this individual I know started a startup and they were building this app and they thought it was going to be the next great big social, uh, social network. And anyhow, so it was their first version. All their assumptions were based on speculation, on fantasies in their head, as all entrepreneurs do. And the fatal mistake they made was they assumed that on day one, they would have a huge amount of users. So they spent a lot of time and money building out scaling. And so they had tons of server capacity. Uh, they had all kinds of load balancing built in. This is way before modern hosting solutions like AWS and Azure were. This is all engineered into the, the VPSs. Anyhow, so they spent a huge amount of money on and time engineering into this platform scaling. So they deploy this big mess of code based on a bunch of assumptions, and they assumed they were going to get a flood of users day one, and I think they got one user. A month later, they may have gotten 30 users. So... They spent, they blew through so much of their VC money worried about scaling and it just never happened. And here's the thing, they couldn't easily change the behavior of the application because they had all this scaling garbage built into it. So they couldn't nimbly change things. So there you go, that's just one example. I hope you found this video useful. If anybody tells you when you're building your first version of an app, you have to consider scaling. Uh, just walk away, just walk away, say, okay, see you later there, buddy. Just in case you don't know who I am, my name is Steph, and I've been a software developer writing commercial code since 1994. I currently, well, one of the things I have, I have a SaaS product out today called Studio Web, where I have many school districts and many schools who use it today to teach code, to manage classrooms, manage uh, students, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. So I actually have real-world software that's being used by government institutions, private institutions, schools, etc. So there's proof in the puddings. So if you want to learn from me, subscribe to this channel. You can check out my boot camp and mentoring program, which is unique. Because not only do I teach you how to code, I teach you how to be a professional developer. I teach you how to code the web stack. I teach you soft skills. I teach you psychology skills. I teach you personal finance. I'm basically transferring my decades of experience to you. So you don't have to spend 20 years figuring out what took me 15, 20 years to figure out. You can get it all right away. All right. Thanks for watching. We'll talk soon. Bye-bye.